Hello, hello from Berlin. Thank you for tuning in to our session, Germany's Digital Healthcare Act. My name is Julia Peach. I work with Germany Trade and Invest. And before I start, let's do some housekeeping. Some of you might have joined uh, sessions before. We have 30 minutes in total. I will talk about Germany's healthcare system and uh, especially about the Digital Care Act. And in the end, we will have enough time for questions and, questions and answers. So please use the Q&A chat to um, post your questions. And I will take time at the end of this um, session to answer your questions. If I don't have enough time to answer all of your questions, you will have my contact information in the end. And uh, we can do it afterwards if we don't have enough time in this session. So let's start. Um, let me use some sentence about uh, who we are and what we do. We are the Economic Development Agency of Germany, and we support the German economy to go abroad. And we help um, investors, um, so investors in Germany, to help them to expand to the German market, to help them set up shop, and um, yeah, enter the German healthcare market or any other market that they're interested in. So we also market Germany as a business location. And of course, we also support the new federal state and the structural transformation in Germany. We are located in nearly 50 um, locations uh, around the world. We have two locations in Germany. So wherever you are in the world, you can find a colleague of us. So uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Our business location services look like this. So if you are a company that wants to enter the German market and is interested in um, how to uh, form a company in Germany, how to start your business here, we have um, many um, uh, free of charge service services which you can uh, make use of. So we help with market information. We ha have a lot of material that we can send out, but we also do market research for you. We also help you with information about the tax and legal structure in Germany. So all of the inform in important questions about company formation and company taxation. We have a team for that that is happy to guide you through all this. And the same holds true for funding and um, incentive, incentive programs. So we make sure that you understand the various programs and that you can make use of them. So in a nutshell, we uh, support you with the whole project management um, that you need from the first idea that Germany might be an interesting market until you have the key to your office here. So let's start with the healthcare um, industry or the healthcare system in Germany. For those of you who are not familiar with it, I want to share just a few slides to get us all on the same page. So here you see one of Germany's largest growth markets, healthcare. We spend more than or nearly 400 billion euros a year on healthcare in Germany, which accounts to more than 11 percent of the total GDP, um, a lot um, or the vast majority in Germany have public health insurance, 73 million people and 9 million people have uh, private health insurance. We have nearly 2,000 um, hospitals with over 500,000 beds in Germany and healthcare is also an important um, job market. As you can see here, more than 7 million people are employed in the German healthcare industry. For those of you who are not so familiar with the health insurance um, system in Germany, the statutory health insurance system and the private health insurance system, um, we achieve almost um, universal health insurance coverage in Germany as health insurance coverage is mandatory in Germany. As you can see here, the vast majority have public health insurance and about 10% have private health insurance. We have 105 public health insurance companies and 44 private health insurance companies. Some of you might be especially interested in the hospital sector. As said before, we have 1,925 hospitals in Germany. We have public ones, private ones, and charity-based ones. 
And on the right side, you see that the share of privately held or uh, privately, um, yeah, privately held hospitals is increasing in Germany. In healthcare, we are facing um, some tough challenges, um, as you can see here. Germany is the oldest population in Europe already and the second oldest population in the world after Japan. And with that, of course, more challenges come along. So we have more people that are care recipients that are taken care of in um, home care um, or at care homes. We have more people with chronic diseases, more people with multiple diseases at the same time. And of course, I don't have to explain to you that digital health can help to face some of these healthcare challenges. So let's look at um, how big digital health is in Europe and in Germany already. So even before the corona pandemic hit, there was a vast growth uh, predicted for digital health in the world, in Europe, and also in Germany. And these are some new numbers that, that was uh, now predicted after the corona pandemic and all the um, acceleration that the corona pandemic um, caused for digital health solutions. So here you see the market volume for Europe, and this is the market volume for Germany. So um, why do we see this growth? Why do we see a boost in digital health in Germany? Well, first of all, let's go back uh, one step and look at the current situation. So in Germany, we already have remote treatment. We already have e-prescription, and we have electronic patient, patient records. Who would have thought? thought? But we only have them in little islands. Let me explain what that means. Of course, we have hospitals that are in maybe some more rural areas that don't have certain specialists anymore. And they are already connected to larger hospitals in urban areas uh, via teleconsultation, for example. We have e-prescription. So there are, there are health insurance companies who offer their clients, their customers e-prescription. The same holds true for electronic patient records. But again, we only have them in little islands. And what we are still waiting for is the nationwide rollout so that every patient, every insured person in Germany can have uh, or can make use of e-prescription and can have an electronic patient record. And this is going to change with the Digital Care Act. It was enacted to improve care with digital health applications, so-called DIGAS. And I will define DIGAS here in a minute. So let me first highlight some of the key points of this Digital Care Act. So first of all, by January of next year, so that will be in two months, every German will have access to an electronic patient record. Teleconsultation is also being promoted and being strengthened. So there are more possibilities for providers to use teleconsultation and, of course, um, for patients also to make use of that. And especially now with the current um, lockdown situation, uh, we saw that it makes a lot of sense to avoid going into the doctor's office and see your doctor online. And we see that the acceptance of doctors and patients alike is increasing in Germany due to the corona pandemic. There will also be an improved access to patient data for research purposes. So the public health insurance companies will have to anonymize their member demographics and um, health data and will send them to a central database that is managed by the German government. And then research organizations and universities can request access to this data for research purposes. The Digital Care Act had, has also something in there um, around money and funding. So some of you might not know the Innovation Fund. It was set up in 2016 by the German government to further develop the quality of care. And the idea was to financially support new types of care as well as research projects which are not yet part of standard care. 
So this innovation fund will be extended until 2024 with 2 million euros per year. And then health insurance companies can support need-based and patient-oriented development of digital innovation. And last but not least, and really, really uh, interesting for, especially for medical app developers, doctors are allowed to prescribe DGAS. Um, for example, medical apps and health insurance companies can, um, can reimburse these DGAS. And this is something we want to look into right now. So first of all, what are DGAS? What do we mean by DGAS? So diggers are digital health applications. By definition, they are medical product class, class 1 or 2A under the current MDR. Their main function has to rely on digital technology and their intended use has to be centered around the patient. So it is possible to include doctors, but the patient has always to be in the center of the use for these. Product functionalities can be detection, treatment, abatement of pain, um, compensation of diseases, injuries, or disabilities. And this is what it is looked like. So um, the B farm set up this so-called fast track um, into the DIGA directory so that um, that digital health applications can get faster into the statutory health system. And of course, at a first glance, this might look a little complex and complicated, but don't worry, I will, I will walk you through this. So at the beginning is the developer or the manufacturer of um, a digital um, health application. Let's say a medical app, for example. If you, if you have that app and you're sure that it is um, a great solution for the German healthcare market, um, you can advise the B farm, which will get your application. But before that, they will also get in touch with you and can do some consultancy. Um, that will cost some money. Um, it is not so much and you can always choose if you want the full package or not. So, important to get in touch with them early and talk to them and make sure that you're eligible for this FASTEC program. So the B farm advises and examines before you even fulfill all your applications. The B farm, for those of you who are not familiar with, with it, um, the B farm is an independent federal higher authority within the portfolio of the Ministry of Health. It's a research institute which conducts its own as well as independent research and, and it is involved in, in many tasks, for example, improving the safety of medicinal products, detecting and evaluating the risk of medical devices, or it also monitors the legal traffic of narcotic drugs, just to give you some examples. So let's get back to the fast track. So your um, medical app has to fulfill um, certain requirements, of course. You see them here in blue and in orange. In blue, you have requirements such as safety, quality, functionality, privacy, um, and uh, data security. And good news is that these requirements are often um, already fulfilled if you have CE marks. The second set of rules or requirements here, you see them in orange. This is what it is new about this fast track. The, these requirements involve so-called positive care effects. What do we mean by that? So positive care effects are medical benefits or um, so-called structural or procedural improvements. And let me, let me get, give you an example for that. So structural and procedural improvements can be access to care, adherence, or health literacy, or even overcoming gaps from one type of care to the other. So for example, if you have knee surgery, and after knee surgery, you have to go into rehab, you know, you have to see a physical therapist, for example. And sometimes you have to wait for the physical therapist to have uh, appointments for you. 
but you have to start quickly to do um, these uh, rehab uh, procedures. And then there might be a medical app or an online game that can help you to overcome this gap. So overcome the time where, while you are waiting and you can already connect to a physical therapist uh, online, for example, do some, um, do some um, exercise online with an online coach, for example. That would be, that would be an example. So if your app fulfills both sets of these requirements and it takes up to three months to evaluate all this, you can be listed in the DGI directory. You're good to go. Health insurance companies can, um, can reimburse your app. Doctors can prescribe this app. But of course, if you are a young company, you are a startup, you have a great idea, you have a great solution already, but you have not yet have time to conduct large studies to prove your positive care effect. This is when this new, new uh, preliminary listing comes into play. That means that you are able to be part of a testing phase. Um, you have to have an elevation, evaluation concept and a justification for positive care effects. So uh, let's say a concept um, for your study before you, you conducted all these studies. And then you have 12 months of time. And this time span can also be extended if, if needed. You have 12 months time then to prove these positive care effects. That means that you are already listed in the DIGA directory. Doctors can already prescribe your app and it, they can be reimbursed by um, the health insurance companies. And you have the time to test your medical app and collect patient data. So this is really great news for startups that have a great solution but have not yet had the time to conduct the study. Again, the idea behind it is that these solutions get into the statutory health system faster and it's easier for them to prove that they have positive care effects for the German health system. So after these 12 months, if you ha can then um, show your studies, you can show that you are, have positive care effects, you have a proof of that, then you can be listed in the DIGA directory for good, and then the price negotiation starts and you are part of the um, German health insurance system. So of course, you, you will have uh, uh, many questions right now about the requirements, about what is a DIGA, what is not a DIGA, about the process. And don't worry, the B Farm has published a great guideline. It's a 130 pages um, long document. It's also available in English. Um, it's easy to digest, it's straightforward, and it gives you all of the answers. It gives you, it provides you with many examples of what is a DIGA, what is not a DIGA. So um, make sure that before you consider this fast track, that you um, get all the information, talk to the Bay Farm before you start, and then um, you are good to go. And this is just one path of entering the German market, of course. There are uh, many different options. And even if you have a great solution and it's not focused so much around the patient, but maybe it helps um, um, doctors to uh, diagnose certain diseases or so, there are other, um, other options to enter the German market. This is just one option. This is one option for medical applications that focus around the patient. Um, so let me finish my presentation by um, emphasizing again that, of course, the pandemic has encouraged the use of digital health in Germany. And we see now that teleconsultation, medical apps, online coaching platforms have proven their value. And accompanied with um, the now increase, increasing acceptance by patients and by doctors, and the now forming um, the, the forming set of rules for this really regulated market, but yet, of course, also a promising market. Diggers are here to stay also after the pandemic. And we at Germany Trade and Invest, we are happy to support you 
um, to guide you through this and to also, of course, um, inform you about all of the uh, important contact points that you need. So I will end my presentation with my contact details. So please don't hesitate to get in touch with me afterwards. I'm happy also to share my presentation and to provide you with the links that you need to uh, get into this fast track and um, to make use of all the, the information that we have available. As I said, we have, uh, we have some uh, more time for questions and answers. And let me just um, check if we have questions already. So if you have questions, please um, post them in the Q&A section here. And then I will read them out and um, if I don't have time to do that all right now, I will answer them afterwards. Please don't forget to write me an email if I haven't, uh, if I haven't talked about your questions yet. So we have one question regarding, yeah, re regarding the studies and um, if they have to be um, German or not. Yeah, I think, I think I have to talk about two things here. First of all, um, you can do your application in English. So you can start the process in English. But of course, everything that comes out in the end, so everything that goes into the DIGA directory, and these are the information that the doctors use and that the patients use, they have to be in German, of course. So in the end, you have to translate your medical app and your homepage and all the information that goes out to the German doctors and to the German patients, of course. And talking about the studies, so in general it said, yeah, the studies have to be in German. The studies have to, uh, um, have to be conducted in Germany. But there are some certain um, uh, um, um, things. They, they can be conducted in another country if you can prove that the um, healthcare system or the health environment is comparable to the one in Germany. And it's something that I cannot um, evaluate by looking at your solution. It's really important that you talk to BFAM before that and make sure that if you have the studies already from your home country, you make sure that you can use them for this, for this program. So there are some exceptions and there are some uh, possibilities, but you have to closely, closely look at what the possibilities are. So another question, where can we find the BFARM document? Yeah, that's really, really important. If you go on the homepage of, of BFARM, um, you find different segments and under, um, I think it's digital health applications in English. If you go on their English homepage, you find everything about the fast track and you also find the, um, the DIGA guide or the fast track guide. If you write me an email, I can, I can provide you with the link that you don't have to Google. I'm happy to do that. Um, oh, another, another interesting question. Five applications have DIGA clearance. Do you know their name? Um, I know their name and, uh, it's, um, official, um, official information. If you go on the homepage that I just uh, talked about, you also find the DIGA directory. So you can look into the DIGA directory and see who is in that fast, who did the fast track and who is in the DIGA directory. You see information about um, these applications. So it's publicly available. Again, if you, if you, if you don't want to uh, Google that and um, uh, look for that, if you have uh, problems finding it, write me an email. I, I send out the link if you like. Okay, then another question. Is it possible to reimburse as a DIGA before finishing the study or only after final approval? Okay, so as I said, if you don't have these studies yet or in the middle of, of doing that, you have the thing that you have to provide is, of course, you have to have the requirements that, that I showed you in blue. So the first requirements about functionality and um, uh, data privacy and so on. You have to be a medical, uh, medical device. You have to have CE. And then you can, um, already be, um, in the DIGA directory and reimbursed 
if you do the studies while you are in that, that process. So yes, you can be in, immersed as a DIGA before the, the studies um, are finished. That it is, that is what is a, it is about. It's about getting into the system. If you can prove you have a safe, safe solution and you have a good um, concept for your studies, and then you can uh, be um, listed preliminary. Okay. There are more questions about these DGAS that are already in, um, that are already approved. So yeah, um, it makes a lot of sense to look at them, who they are and what they do. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm happy to provide you with a link so you can have a look at them. Okay, that's, that's also an interesting question. Are the diggers going to be limited in number? For example, will there be a maximum um, of diggers or no limits? Um, so I have no information if they will stop this process at a certain time. Um, um, the question is how fast, you know, the, the system is how, how fast. Um, um, 10 or 20 or 30 DIGAS uh, can be in that directory. From experts, you hear some numbers by the end of the year, we will have uh, 12 or 20. So it's, it's really, it's really uh, complicated to, to really do that, um, to, to really um, evaluate how many we will have in the end. Um, there is no certain time where they will just um, stop doing that, um, stop doing uh, evaluating DIGA. So um, there is no clear number that I can give you. What we know is that they will further develop this process. So um, there will be maybe a um, Digital Care Act 2 and 3, because um, again, it is about improving um, healthcare in Germany and bringing digital helpers into the system. So I will, I will say rather than um, there, there will be a limitation, there will be a um, further development of the system and more and more digital helpers will come into, into the statutory health system. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's also, also interesting. Does the legal listing affect as well the private insurance companies? So, um, again, the process that I just, um, that I just uh, showed you was, uh, about, um, the public health insurance, um, system, the statutory health insurance system. But, um, it's also important to look at the private health insurance, of course. And, um, some of them already have um, um, health apps in their program to, um, to, um, yeah, to, to, to help their customers with digital helpers. So it's just another track, you could say. It's another path that you could look at when you are, um, a digital health, um, provider and you want to enter the German market. So one path could be targeting all the public health insurance companies. But you can also look at the private health insurance companies. And as I said, we have about 44 and you could try to collaborate with them, uh, one or two or three, maybe all of them to get into the privately insured, um, health market in Germany. Yeah. That's another path. Okay. I think we are at the end. I just got the message that, uh, we're at the end of the session. If uh, I have not answered your question, uh, if I have missed that, or um, if you have more questions now that you think about all that, um, let me try if I can just quickly uh, provide you with my email address again. So I'm happy to get your message and we can, um, uh, we can have a, a call afterwards and discuss all this, all this. As said, I'm happy to guide you through this. I'm happy to, to help you with more information on that. So again, thank you very much for listening. Have a good uh, Medica. I wish I could be in Düsseldorf uh, with you, but uh, maybe we can all meet again next year. So stay healthy and um, have a good rest of the week. Thank you so much and bye-bye. <laughs>